Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live, and this is breaking news. Of course, I want to say breaking news. I realize this came out yesterday already that Brussels, uh, right there, is, is under martial law. Uh, very serious situation right there. Uh, you're seeing in the background here uh, troop vehicles there on the streets of Brussels uh, and uh, Belgium. And it is very serious, uh, to say the least, this, this uh, issue of martial law. There's, there's a tremendous threat that they're under. Uh, at least it's what has been reported by the government. I know that Veterans Today is calling this a false flag. And the reason why we are bringing this particular news to you is one of our own uh, precious friend, Sister Nadine, I uh, won't call her last name, but she lives there in uh, Belgium, and it is a very serious issue for her. She's asked for prayer, uh, so we will be praying for her as well. Um, the reason why I say the issue is serious, because the, the sister, that uh, Sister Nadine, actually said to me that not only do they close under martial law, the universities, the schools, etc., but they also shut down all the banks. That really gave concern to me because what it made me wonder is if they're not practicing for their new global economic change that will take place in the very near future. This could be the reason why they have forced these refugees in and around the world in different places so that they could justify through terror attacks in order to be able to bring the entire world under martial law and bring in a new world order. So my prayer and my heart goes out to our sister there that is in that situation there for sure. Uh, at the same token, though, I can see where this can spread very rapidly, especially here in Europe. We see these uh, issues here, different countries locking down its borders. We are locked down in the Czech Republic, although we're not under martial laws of yet, but that could easily change if the threat presents itself here as well. Uh, so I definitely wanted to bring this to your attention. I want to take you to the... Um, uh, article here on uh, Veterans Today. It's written by uh, Dr. Kevin Barrett. He says, false flag terror madness, Brussels, Paris under martial law. Uh, Europe is now militarized concentration camp thanks to the uh, Gladio B, as he says here. EU authorities are using a fabricated menace of state-sponsored false flag terror to impose martial law on their populations. Uh, he states here, our correspondence in Brussels has reported that the streets are empty except for parades of military vehicles. Brussels has become a ghost town. The streets are empty and everything is closed. I am afraid to venture outdoors to buy bread. Uh, and like I said, we can concur with this information. I don't live too far from Brussels myself. Uh, if I were to drive there, it'd be a day's drive is all. And uh, Sister Nadine lives there. Uh, right there, so she knows it for, for a fact and is very concerned about the situation going on there. So hopefully this will lift soon, and I believe that it probably will. I think the whole purpose is here, as I said again, and this is only speculation or conjecture on my point here, I believe that they're only preparing for what they will do when they bring the economies down and change everything over uh, or, or whatever, the, maybe just to, to enact the new world order in itself. Uh, he says, anyway, meanwhile, the French parliament has voted to extend the nation's state of emergency for three months. Um, um, let me back up. I'm sorry. The authorities have given no reason for their clampdown other than a vague assertion of terrorist threats. Uh, meanwhile, the French Parliament has voted to extend the nation's state of emergency for three months. I did see that as well. Uh, the date, the 9-11, with its three digits, 911, the emergency call number, was chosen to represent the permanent uh, global state of emergency, in, uh, in, uh, emergency in, inaugurated. Though hundreds of people have been detained without charges, it is safe to assume that the real uh, orchestrators of the Friday the 13th massacre in Paris, the heads of the operation of Gladi Gladio B, are not only still walking about free, but are actually in charge of the transformation of their countries into a militarized concentration camps. Uh, I have to agree with that, because one thing that I noticed as well is that, uh, as we had reported, we believed that it was a retaliation for the French bombing the oil fields there in 
inside of Syria there. And yet at the same token, it was uh, the Germans, the, the French, it was the, the Turkish, it was even uh, Basra al-Assad with the United States and the UK turning their heads to the blind eye to the selling of the illegal uh, oil there that should have been barred from any country buying it, but how could you resist at $15 a barrel? Something that normally goes for $100 a barrel to make the billions of dollars that the wealthy people are going to make. And we've been working very fervently on a very detailed report about this, just how deep and filthy it goes with those that are willing to make the billions. And of course, we implicated Egypt from what we saw in the Bible, what we see there in the passages there that clearly identifies Egypt as a key player in all of this. And sure enough, we find out that Egypt is big into making sure that the wealthy get only wealthier by using uh, this string of oil uh, sales in order to fatten all the pockets with this. Uh, nonetheless, though, my point in stating this, though, as far as a, a, a retaliation on Paris for the bombings that the French did, I think that's what they wanted us to believe anyway. But how could such a well-orchestrated attack on Paris happen so rapidly, only within a couple of days? There had to be a lot more planning involved in this, very well orchestrated planning at that. And could it be that some of the intelligence services around the world did have a hand in this Paris attack? I think that very well could be the case, especially seeing as they're trying to cover their tracks and make it look like in reality that they had nothing to do with it and they're only trying to stop the funding of ISIS. Well, ISIS definitely has been created by the U.S. government as it's already been clearly identified and we've also seen that the Mossad is working with uh, ISIS as well. So if they have these people running in the background, who do you think might have coordinated the attacks on Paris, France to begin with? Now Paris is under martial law for the next three months and so is now Belgium. How long will it last there? How long before the next country or the next major city here in the Europe uh, ends up with the same martial law at its doors? You know, Israel's under a major terrorist threat, but it's not under martial law. Isn't that interesting? They have a greater terror threat than any other nation of the world, but they're not under martial law. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? Anyway, the article goes on to state here, though hundreds of people have been detained, uh, we read that French Prime Minister Manuel Valls announced that his government has deployed 10,000 military troops and another 100,000 uh, uh, gendarmes to enforce the nationwide state of emergency. The shelter-in-place crackdown on Brussels is reminiscent of the lockdown of the Boston, Massachusetts after the false flag of Boston. Marathon bombing. Such declarations of martial law are designed to trigger fear and hysteria and to prevent the population from learning the truth. That is their own rulers for foreign terrorists who stage the very carnage from which they so richly benefit. Unfortunately, there's a lot of truth in what he says there. I, you know, I can't say whether or not Paris is a staged attack, but one thing's for sure, it has a lot of suspicious things going on in behind the scenes, uh, without the, 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 to say the very least. Uh, so yes, it could very well be a staged event, or at least not so much staged. I do believe that the attack did happen, just like 9-11 really did happen in the United States. Innocent lives were lost. But how did the, like in the case of 9-11 in the United States, how did the passport strangely survive such an inferno of fire when everything else burned completely up? All the bodies burned up, everything burns up, but the passports do survive and fall to the ground miraculously, unsinged, untarnished. I mean, gosh, guys, we really got to wake up to some of these things. You know, there's a, there's a whole agenda for this, not to mention the rich get richer and filthier and dirtier with all their money. Uh, my gosh, no wonder why the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. So anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. Pray for Sister Nadine. We do ask you for that. Sister Nadine, I apologize. I didn't ask you about mentioning your name, but we do love you, sister, and we are praying for you that God will... Uh, bring this to a, a, a quick resolution, quick end, so that it'll be safe for you there in your own country. Shalom. God bless you all for watching.